everybody, I'm Dr. Todd. Welcome to The Miller Method. Today we are going to be talking about the paleo diet um, a little bit and one of the pitfalls of the paleo diet. So for those of you who don't know, um, and I'm no expert on the paleo diet, so if I say something that's incorrect, please forgive me, but my basic understanding of the paleo diet is that it's a diet based on the fact that people eat the same sort of things that Paleolithic people would have eaten, our ancestors would have eaten. And the main, I guess, characteristics of the Paleo diet is that it excludes certain things, grains, dairy, um, I think legumes are excluded by the Paleo diet, processed foods are generally excluded by the Paleo diet. And philosophically, I have no problem with the Paleo diet. I think it's a good way to eat. Um, but what I have noticed from people who have come into the lab um, who are doing the paleo diet. A lot of these people are CrossFitters. Um, uh, the paleo diet is popular in the CrossFit community, but a lot of them are complaining that their exercise performance is suffering. And by nature of excluding things like grains and dairy, um, the paleo diet for some people ends up becoming a low carb diet. And so really what we're talking about here are the ill effects, um, the exercise performance ill effects of a low carb diet, not necessarily a paleo diet, um, but it's just common that we see it with people who are doing the paleo diet. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, energetics during exercise and how carbohydrates and fats play into that and how the paleo diet may potentially negatively affect that. So I have a little drawing back here as I usually do. And here we have a hamburger. So let's say we eat this hamburger and that hamburger gets broken down in the gut and out go into the bloodstream goes fat, carbohydrate, and protein. So this is the blood out here. And in here is the muscle, okay? So we have fat, carbs, and protein out in the blood and they come into the muscle. Protein from the hamburger goes for muscle protein synthesis. That goes to build uh, muscle, so it's not really used for energy, or it shouldn't be. Fat and carbs, on the other hand, come into the muscle, and they go into an organelle called the mitochondria. And you may remember the mitochondria from ninth grade biology. It's called the powerhouse of the cell. The purpose of the mitochondria is to take food, fat and carbs, and convert it into a compound called ATP adenosine triphosphate. And this ATP is what's actually used to power muscle. So ATP goes into a muscle, it binds to actin and myosin, and it causes contraction in the muscle. This pathway is called the aerobic pathway. So fat and carbs go into the mitochondria, they produce ATP. We've all heard of aerobic exercise. This is the way energy is produced aerobically. It's slow. So if I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna run a marathon, and that takes a long time, especially for me, um, that would take forever. I've never run a marathon, so trust me, I'm no good at it. But that, this energy producing pathway is really slow. So it's used during activities that are generally slow and low intensity. But let's say I wanted to do an activity where I tell my friend, I want you to run as far as you can in one minute. That's a very high intensity exercise. And this pathway is too slow to provide energy during that type of exercise. So we have to get ATP a different way. And we do that through a process called glycolysis. And what glycolysis, glycolysis is, is the production of ATP from carbohydrate outside of the mitochondria. So right here, when carbohydrate, before it gets into the mitochondria, we can produce a bunch of ATP. Not as much as this way, but we can produce it this way. And that energy provision is fast. So when we do activities, high intensity activities, sprinting, jumping, um, whatever it is, those high intensity activities rely to a heavy degree on this pathway. So a lot of the CrossFit type activities that you see people doing, if you watch the CrossFit games, the vast majority of that stuff relies on this pathway, okay? or at least a significant portion of it. If we limit our carbohydrates, we essentially minimize or cut out this pathway altogether, and then we have to rely on fat. And this is the important part. Fat can't be burned anaerobically. Fat has to go into the mitochondria. So if we so the fat pathway is always slow. So if we remove the carbohydrate from the equation 
and no longer eat carbohydrate or minimize the amount of carbohydrate in our diet, we force ourselves to a higher reliance on fat, which is very detrimental to your exercise performance depending on what kind of exercise intensity you're doing. So high intensity exercises absolutely suffer when you minimize carbohydrate in a diet, or especially if you eliminate carbohydrate in a diet. So this is why um, the paleo diet is so interesting because it's, it became really popular and, and I think promoted largely with, with the proliferation of CrossFit. The irony is CrossFit is super high intensity type stuff which relies heavily on carbohydrate. We have a lot of CrossFitters who come in here and sit at this very table and tell us our exercise performance is suffering. And when we look at their food logs, when we look at what they're eating, they're largely eating high fat, low carb diets. And as soon as they make that switch, their exercise performance comes back and they're happy. So once again, we're giving you a reason not to avoid high carbohydrate diets. I hope this helps. See ya.